Hello and welcome to the very, very first quantum creating podcast. How to bring the world of the formless into form and other true stories with me, Paul Webb, the quantum mentor. And welcome to the very first episode. And I, for one, am absolutely thrilled. A little hot, a little dry-throated, a little nervous, but who cares, right? We're here on the first podcast. And wow, what a journey to get here. It's been a long time coming. And I, for one, am thrilled to be here in front of you and to just deliver what I believe in, or not even what I believe in, what I know to be true what I know has helped me and what I know is helping hundreds of my clients at the moment and what I truly hope you'll take on board and help you in your journey. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with a little background. As I sit here with my journal, with the, got all my content in, I sit here with my water because it's really, really hot today. And what you don't know is that I actually sit here for five minutes waiting to hit record on this podcast simply because there was a car outside the house which was banging out the music quite good tunes to be fair but you would have picked that up and and it's kind of this thing where okay I'll wait for the car to go then there will be no background noise and then we can get going with the podcast and you know that kind of thinking in many ways can hold us back and paralyze us for a long long time you know, we wait for that perfect moment. We wait for that perfect bit of information. We wait for the stars to align. We wait for our voice not to be quite so croaky. We wait for the right clothes to wear. We wait, wait, for, the, wait for the right kind of equipment to use. And really, truthfully, we don't have to wait for anything because if we do wait, if we do hang on for that perfect moment, what we discover very, very quick is that it doesn't exist, at least not in this context. There is never the perfect moment. There will always be a car outside with the tunes banging. There will always be the scratchy throat. There will always be the not quite right equipment. It will always be not quite the right time. And you know what? You just have to click play. And you have to do that in all areas of your life. And that's really what this entire quantum creating podcast is all about. It's about clicking play in your life and upgrading your life and living a life of power and abundance and alignment and mastery. And you know, that's kind of what I've tried to do over the years. And sometimes I've got it very, very right. But sometimes I've got it extraordinarily wrong as well. And I will give you the benefit of both of those. Because I'm not one of these mentors who have learn everything from a book and then passing it straight on to you, which seems to be a current theme in many ways in coaching and mentoring. I've gone through that so-called school of hard knocks. I've had my ups and I've had my downs and I've had my trials and I've had my tribulations and I've had my joys and I've had my sadness, but it's all part of the learning curve. And this has happened over almost three decades And I can bring this to you now with the confidence that in some way, shape or form, something I say may help one of you solve a problem you've got. And we're going to try and do this in this weekly podcast. Now, I committed publicly to having this podcast up and running in July. So here we are. And I just want to take a moment to speak to you about what's going to happen going forward in this podcast. You see, this isn't going to be a podcast just about me. This is for you, the listener and watcher of this content, of this podcast. And I hope to affect as many of you as possible. So I'd be absolutely thrilled if you could share, if you could like, if you could review and download this podcast, because that really helps me get the message out there. And if you find any value at all in this content I'm going to deliver with you going forward, then please do me that honor of just trying to make sure that we get it shared as much as possible. And then sit back for the ride. And it will be a ride. I'll be bringing some of my stuff. But most importantly, I'll be bringing people on board who can deliver absolute world-class value to you. People you'll know people you may not know, people with huge followings, big, big tribes, if you like, and people with much smaller tribes, but who aren't having just as big an impact on them 
as the people with the massive, huge tribe. You see, everyone has a message. Everyone has a mission. I think it was uh, uh, Cahill Gibron, uh, the author of The Prophet, who said your, your work is placed in your heart at the moment of your birth. And if you find that passion, if you find that purpose, if you find that wonderful obsession, you can then go on and affect millions of people. There's no limit, really. You just have to stay aligned. You just have to stay focused. You just have to stay conscious, dare I say, and spread your message, that which you have a knowing for. And there's this journey we go on, you see, this doubt that we have. And we all have it in certain areas, especially when we try and grow. It's natural as a human to be reticent to growth, to be a bit fearful of that resistance. I think it's what makes us successful as humans. It's what's made us outlast every other animal almost on the planet not always for the best but it's our resourcefulness around that that we can fear feel that fear that we can have that resistance but yet we can go on and create magic and that's what it's all about you know it's about creating real magic in your life and that magic to someone maybe just be bringing up well-rounded children whereas on others it may be starting a civil rights movement or ending apartheid to someone else it may be lifting a world cup it may be landing a knockout blow in boxing. It could be anything. It's your magnificent obsession. This is mine. My magnificent obsession is getting in front of people and talking to them about what I believe and what I know to be true. You may agree or you may disagree, but that's absolutely fine. That's not up to me. What's up to me is to deliver what I consider my magnificent obsession. So that is what I'm going to do. And I've got such wonderful people lined up to come on board and spread their message that they know, that they believe in as well. And then you, the listener, the viewer, can make up your own mind. You can extrapolate information and value out of all of that. Try it. If it works, magnificent. You've moved forward. If it doesn't, don't worry. Put it to one side. You haven't failed. You've just got information. That's what it's all about. There's no success or failure, really. They're constructs of the ego. They're competitive, comparative. Really, it doesn't matter. You're just getting feedback as you go on your journey. And that's what happens in the real world, you see. But we're going to talk a lot about quantum physics throughout this journey because it's a real passion of mine. It's something I study relentlessly. I also find it mind-bendingly amazing. It makes me feel like a, a, a big kid again. Where you know the kind of thing where you sit there and go, no way, oh my god, that kind of thing. It makes me a giggling schoolboy. So I want to share that with you. So I hope to bring on. In fact, I'm trying to line up some very well-known quantum physicists to come on and explain more, to give us a little insight in this nonsense of quantum mechanics. We shall talk about, in fact, one of the big themes going through this entire process moving forward, this entire podcast series I'm going to do, is this concept of deliberate practice. I don't know if you've heard of Anders Ericsson. He's probably the world's leading authority on expertise, but I've studied him for quite some time, a good six, seven years, I believe. His research clearly shows that genius is not the remit of someone special, someone different, someone made up a little bit unusually. It's the remit of everyone who persists. It's the remit of everyone who commits to daily, consistent, focused, intentional, deliberate practice. It doesn't matter what the dream is. You can tap into that quantum field of possibility, this soup of infinite probability that exists at the same time. But if you don't put the daily work into practice, if you don't step up and get down and dirty, you will not bring it forth into this world of form. You see, everything is created twice. First, in the world of the formless with our thoughts, the images we hold. Everything you see around you, this 
communication device I'm using, which you are looking at or listening to me from through, was once in someone's mind as an image. It didn't exist in the world of form. It has to exist twice, you see, first as an image in a mind somewhere, and then through deliberate, daily, intensive, focused practice, it becomes a physical thing. And we wonder how on earth we coped without it. And that's something I encourage you all to do, to commit to daily practice in the direction of your worthy goal. You see, we are habitual creatures. Habits define us. But to some degree, they make us or break us. I've got something written here. Someone I heard, I, I don't know, I can't remember where it came from, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd reference it. But I heard this a wee while ago, that a habit is just a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviours and emotions. So if you think about that, it's something we acquire through repetition. So if you think about tying your shoelace, for instance, there would be one point where you just couldn't do it. You had no idea. And then through a process of repetition, you taught yourself how to tie a shoelace. And what you did from a neurological standpoint, you wired together cells of recognition, neurons and synapses that created this pathway through the nervous system to enable your body physically to complete a task without you having to go back through your banks of memories and say, I don't remember to do this. Well, I've got to take it in this hand. I've got to pull this together. I've got to do this loop. I've got to put my thumb there. I've got, you don't need to do that. You just automatically do it. Your body knows more intrinsically how to do it. It's more in tune than your mind in this instance. And that's a habit. And that's very, very powerful. But it can work for you and it can work against you. And that's something that we have to look at. Because if your habits, oh, yeah, sorry, let me backtrack. If you're not where you want to be in your life, it's going to be to, due to the actions you take, your behaviours, your habits, the narrative you tell yourself, the language you use, and ultimately the images you have in your mind. So that's where we have to go right back to the fountainhead. And I will make sure that we get plenty of people on this podcast who can help me unravel that for you. I'm just trying to think what else. You know... Remember one thing, where you are now is absolutely perfect. We live in an age with this extraordinary time to be alive. If you think about it, most of you watching this now have already succeeded. You probably have a house or an apartment, or certainly a place to stay. You have a device upon which to listen or watch this podcast you have an internet connection or you're somewhere with an internet connection so you have at your fingertips more computing power than the apollo astronauts had when they went to the moon just five decades ago you've already won the odds of you being here now at this point in time and space with what you have available to you has been calculated at something like one in 400 trillion those are staggering odds. And yet you don't think you've won. You don't think you can succeed in anything. And yet you have everything you need right here, right now. You're not going to get anything else. You can't jump 500 years in the future and bring back that technology. You have it here now. And all you have to do is understand that. Let go of the doubt. You don't even have to believe. Just do what you do when you go to the movies. Suspend disbelief and get to work on the magnificent obsession. And over the coming weeks, myself and my guests will attempt to do that with you, to show you how exactly you can do that, to give you some idea of what's needed. But here's the thing. We can't make you do it. Only you can do it. And if you're looking for the magic bullet from someone else, you will be waiting for an awfully long time. So there we go. 
the Quantum Creating Podcast, episode number one, with me, Paul Webb, the Quantum Mentor. Is a wrap! How fabulous is that? I'm so excited. And I hope you're going to stay with me on this journey as we move forward. I have big, grandiose plans for this podcast, simply because I'm a man who loves big, grandiose plans. How will it go? Where will it end up? What will it look like? I don't know. And you know what? I don't really care. I will just turn up, record, share, and let it do its magic. I suggest you will do the same. Have a truly amazing week, and I'll see you next week.